Hello, welcome to Board Game TV, and today we're going to be trying to play Marvel Champions, the card game for Fantasy Flight games designed for one through four players, and it is a living card game. That's right. Um, I had some trepidation about getting this. I was was and am still a big fan of Marvel Legendary, as many of you know. However, with Legendary. It has kind of um, it's kind of it's gotten real big, and they've come out with the past three, maybe four expansions that I just have no interest in. I know the New Mutants, I don't have any interest in the Shield, the Heroes of Asgard, and I have everything else for it, and it's been a good product. And if they continue to come out with stuff that I like, let's say they come out with a Ghost Rider expansion or something like that, then I will continue to get it and play it. However, for the time being, I'm putting it aside, and I wanted a replacement. Now, I've never played a living card game before. I was kind of interested in the Arkham living card game, but by the time I got interested in it, it had been out for a while, and you're talking about quite a money investment for somebody like me who wants to try to have everything that comes with it. Well, the Marvel Living Card Game uh, came out, I don't know, maybe a year ago. A little less. And it doesn't have that much expansions to it. So you can go back and get it and not have to pay buku bucks to catch up with it. However, I did make myself one promise with this. I said to myself, if I'm going to get invested in this game, um, then I'm. if they come out with heroes I don't care for, I am not going to buy that hero. I'm only going to buy the heroes I want. I'm only going to buy the heroes that I like. And I'm only going to buy the villain stuff that I like as well. Or, you know, the, the supplements or expansions that I like. My OCD is going to have to take a break and I made myself vow to do that. So, with that understanding, I got Marvel Champions, the base set. I got, um, and it comes with four heroes. It comes with Captain Marvel, She-Hulk, <clears throat> Iron Man, and Spider-Man. Now, why She-Hulk is in there, I have no idea. Um, Captain Marvel I don't care about, but I like Iron Man and Spider-Man. And it comes with Black Panther as well, and I like him. Um, I did buy for the living card game part, which is a little different from Arkham Horror. So far, it seems like, um, and for those who don't know what a living card game is, a living card game is something that a new product comes out for it every month, and it just keeps expanding and expanding and expanding and expanding. And it can be quite costly. However, um, <clears throat> I once uh, just saw a video recently about Arkham Horror Living Card Game, and somebody went back and bought everything that had come out for it so far, and it cost them around a thousand dollars. And yeah, that's <laughs> that's a sizable chunk of money. And I imagine the Lord of the Ring card game that Fantasy Flight does, it's pretty popular, would be even more because it's been even out longer. However. I bought the base set, and they had come out with Captain America uh, Hero Pack, which I got. They had come out with a Thor Hero Pack, which I got. And um, they'd come out with a um, Villain Pack with the Wrecking Crew, which I got because I like the Wrecking Crew. And they came out with a Villain Pack with the Green Goblin. <clears throat> whom I love the Green Goblin, so I got that. And they, they have plans for the next couple months to release Doctor Strange Hero Pack, which I will get, Black Widow Hero Pack, which I will get, and the Hulk Hero Pack, which I will get. And then they have a big box, uh, Rise of Red Skull, coming out, I think, in September, which I plan on getting. Um, they had a Miss Marvel Hero Pack, which I did not get because I think Miss Marvel is a trash hero. And I'm not supporting that. I don't like her, don't care for her, never have, never will. <clears throat> so I just skipped that pack. However, with what I got, 
there's still plenty to go for. So, um, that's what I have. That's, I think, everything that's out right now. Like I said, because of the worldwide situation, they put it a little bit of delay on some releases. So, um, um, if you're interested, I don't think Fantasy Flight... I know they're restocking, but I don't know if they're taking orders right now. I know when I tried to order uh, stuff off of their website, they were not taking orders. <clears throat> so I had to get a lot of the stuff off of uh, eBay or Amazon. And Amazon, the Hero Pack stuff, some of them are a little bit overpriced, I guess because of what's going on right now. But I was able to get everything for about 100 110 bucks. So, uh, as an investment wise, it's not that bad. And you can still possibly, if you enjoy this game, um, and you, you're wary about getting into a living card game and having to pay so much money, um, like I said, it's, it's been out for almost a year, or if a year, and it only cost me around 110 bucks to get everything I wanted for it. And that was just about everything they put out except for the Miss Marvel pack. So, uh, I wanted to get my Marvel fix and do something with Marvel. And this seemed like the perfect opportunity. Um, and we're going to go over and see how it plays and kind of look at the differences. I know people say that this game is different than Arkham Horror in some ways. It's not a carbon copy, if that's what you're worried about. It's not a carbon copy of something like Lord of the Rings or Arkham Horror. It does take elements from those. Um, but it's not a carbon copy of Legendary either. Which, where this kind of, a lot of people would think, like myself included at one time, would think, this is just their version of Legendary. This is just Fantasy Flight's version of Legendary. Well, it, in some ways it is, but in some ways it isn't. And you'll see how it goes. But we're going to play a solo game <clears throat> uh, with one hero, and I'm going to play Spider-Man. We're going to go up against Rhino, and um, the game scales to how many players you have, so there's that. Um, whether or not it's easy, see I've played several games, and I've won... Playing solo, and I've lost playing solo. And I've played some games with friends of mine and family members, and we've won some and we've lost some with more than one player. So it just it's really more along the lines of the luck of the draw and how you play your cards and what you do with your cards. Rather than I can think of, rather than whether if you play solo with more people it's easier or not. So, there's that. But you can play it solo. It's a great game for solo play. It is fun. I I put it up there right now. I put it up there with Legendary. Um, it's about the same right now. Now, I know this game's going to continue to grow. So, I figure it probably will be better than Legendary at one point. However, if you look at Legendary about a year into its uh, lifespan... And you look at Marvel Champions, about a year into its lifespan, um, I think Marvel Champions, honestly, is a little bit better. So, um, we'll see. But we're going to get the game set up. I'm going to show you what it entails and go over the cards and stuff like that. So, let's get going. Okay, so I have basically the game set up. I have my villain area here. And I have my card area here, and I have my things with my few tokens. Now, there are two little nitpicks I want to go over real quick that I have with this product. Now, this is the base set is 50, 60 bucks. Okay? You get, do get a lot of stuff. However, they cheap out on you, they don't put any card dividers. You're not given any card dividers with this set. Come on, Fantasy Flight, what the hell? Come on. You can't put card dividers in a set. Look, look at what I had to do. I want to show you. You can't charge me a couple dollars extra. You got the insert in there. 
<clears throat> you have the insert in there. You have this thing, but there's no card dividers. And I had to come up with just on the fly a little paper thing. Come on, Fantasy Flight. Stop that crap. Don't cheap out. You have a you have a habit of doing this when you first come out with a product and your base stuff. You did it with Eldritch. Uh, I think you did it with this new Arkham 3rd Edition. Uh, you done it with this. Quit cheaping out. And <clears throat> number two, and this is another problem. Now they they give you enough cards for your decks. And we'll will you get into this more and we'll explain it more. Except for one hero. One hero you can't have a pre-made deck with. Because they don't give you enough cards. Now, when you buy the extra hero packs, you eventually will. But until then, if you just bought the base set, one hero can't have a pre-made deck. And all they're missing is maybe eight, nine cards for their pre-made deck. Come on, Fantasy Flight. Stop. Charge me five bucks extra and give me everything I need, okay? For crying out loud. <sighs> but that's my rant. And I didn't know that when I bought this. And so for those of you who are thinking about buying this, remember, this thing's not coming with any dividers, so you have to provide your own dividers, and you won't have enough cards to have a pre-made deck for everybody. So you're, you're going to have to figure what you want to do with it. Okay. So, you choose a villain. In this instance, we have Rhino. Now, Rhino has two forms, but there is an expert mode to where you could put in his form 3, which he's tougher, and play 2 and 3, but we're just going to play basic normal mode. So, he has a one form, and then when you beat it, you go to his second one, and it'll have instructions for what you're supposed to do. And it tells you how many hit points he has. He has 14 hit points per player. Well, we're one player, so he's going to have 14 hit points. And then you have his scheme, and it just tells you uh, what you do in the scheme. Put Rhino and standard encounter sets, and the cards are labeled, as you'll come to see. So you, you, you don't have a problem which cards you put in there. And then you put one modular encounter set. Now, there's... a <clears throat> Something I did do, I put an extra encounter set in there to make it a little bit more harder. And you can do that with these uh, encounters, so that's fine. And so you flip it, and it's basically the break-in is the scheme. He's the easiest villain to beat. He's your basic villain. And so when this gets seven uh, scheme on it per player... He wins the game. So we have to defeat Rhino, both forms, before he puts seven scheme on this. And we win. If there is seven scheme ever on this, we lose the game. And this little symbol says that every round, we're going to put one scheme per player on here. And there's other ways for him to put scheme on there as well. Now, we lose if he knocks us down to zero hit points. We lose the game. Okay? So, um, and if he ever gets seven scheme on there. We win just by beating both forms of his. And here's his encounter deck. And it's made up of specialty rhino cards and then standard cards and stuff like that. And then we're playing Peter Parker, <clears throat> Spider-Man. Now, Peter Parker here, uh, you start out as your alter ego. And he has uh, a hand size of six and ten hit points. Three recovery. Now, when we flip him, you look, he has a different ability. And you notice a little spider on the bottom here. He has one thwart, two attack, and three defense. Okay? So, um, we're going to go over cards in his deck. Just real quick for people who aren't familiar with living card games. So, he's going to have all the cards with a spider on there. Those are his cards. So, he's Spider-Man cards. 
Then you have basic cards, and he's going to have so many basic cards, okay? So he has a deck compiled of Spider-Man cards, basic cards. Then this game um, has, how many different categories does it have? I think it has four or five different categories. And there is justice, protection, aggression, and there's one other. Um, I want to say there's one other. There is... <clears throat> Yeah, there's protection, leadership. Leadership is the other, okay? So you have to decide, and they all are different, okay? And you have to decide which category of cards you want to put in your deck to go with the basic cards and your own superhero cards. You can play protection, you can play aggression, leadership, justice. And, and, she, <clears throat> and the book recommends you play Spider-Man as justice, okay? So... That's what we're going to do. So, Justice are these, like, yellow cards. Each power is a different category. However, if I wanted to, I could take the Justice cards out of Spider-Man's deck and put the Aggression cards in his deck, and he'll play differently. Um, or I could put the Leadership cards in his deck, and he'll play even more differently. So, that's what you do. You compose your deck of your Identity cards, your basic cards, there'll be a certain number of basic cards, and your whatever category of cards you style you choose to play, justice, aggression, or leadership. And then you compose your, your deck of those cards. Okay? And then that's your deck. Now there's also a nemesis deck. Each hero has one of these. Spider-Man's just happens to be the vulture. Now, at the beginning of the game, then they're usually all about five cards, okay? At the beginning of the game, you're going to set these nemesis, see they're a different color. They're going to go in here, the encounter deck. You're going to set this aside for each hero you play for their own nemesis. And at the beginning of the game, you set it aside, and there's a card here in the encounter deck that'll tell you your nemesis has appeared, Put your nemesis in front of you. You've got to engage him. And that's basically what you'll do is you put your nemesis there. And there's his hit points. He has four hit points. And then you take the other cards and you put them in the encounter deck. So now he can keep popping up and you have to deal with him in the encounter deck. Okay? There's also a burden card unique to every hero. Every hero has one in their deck. But it's going to be yellow backed. And you put that burden card or obligation card in this deck as well. And it's usually a penalty. So each hero has a different obligation card. <clears throat> okay, so um, we're going to go over what you do for each round. And it's, it's not really hard. Now, before we do that, we're going to go over what this means. Okay? Now, once per round, you can flip your hero to your alter ego to his hero okay you can do it only once per round if you flip to Peter Parker and he's not exhausted you can recover three hit points that's what that means that's what that recovery means you can recover three hit points but if you're spider-man you can do three different things and then you can exhaust your hero. You can thwart for one. Spider-Man has one thwart. That means you take one thwart off the scheme. Okay? So if there were five thwart on here, I could take one off, and he's left with four. I can attack for two damage. That means I hit Rhino for two damage, and he takes two damage. And he has 14 hit points, so he would go down to 12. Or I can defend. When Rhino would end up attacking me, I can defend. And let's say Rhino did four damage. Well, I can defend for three, so I would only take one damage. That's what those little numbers mean, okay? And then, you know, of course, you have a power. But 
I'm just going over what these little symbols mean. And Rhino, as well, as you can see, he has a scheme of one and an attack of two. So, um, if I'm in my alter ego, Peter Parker, when it's his turn to attack, he's not going to attack, he's going to scheme. And that means he puts one thwart or one scheme on the, uh, or one threat on the scheme. Okay? So if this had three on it, uh, and you use these little counters here. So if he had three on there, and I'm in my alter ego form, and it's Rhino's turn to attack, he has one scheme, he would put one extra scheme on there. He wouldn't physically attack me, he just put one scheme on a, uh, on a scheme. One threat on a scheme. However, if I'm in Spider-Man form, and he he will attack me, he will do two damage, okay? Very simple. Um, and I have to take two damage. It's up to me whether or not I choose to defend it or not. But the turn sequence is very simple. Now, some schemes start with threat already on them. This one does not. And there can be several schemes in play. So we'll go over if that happens. And there can be several villains in play. Uh, he's the villain. All other villains would be considered minions. Okay? And <clears throat> we'll go over that when that happens. And then, of course, we have Spider-Man. He's my hero, but there are other heroes I can pull out of my deck, and they would be considered allies. Okay? And so we'll go over how they play. But this is your basic setup. It's not that hard. You just have your encounter deck, which every villain has their own really encounter deck. The only thing you have to really add to encounter decks is if you have other modular sets that you get from extra villain packs that add more villains and stuff to the deck. Um, and they're all labeled, so you know what they, they say. Like, this is Rhino, one of 21. He has 21 Rhino cards in his deck. The only thing you really have to add constantly to each villain deck is the standard villain cards. There's seven of them. And uh, they only give you enough villain cards for, to put in one deck at a time. So you, you can have each villain deck pre-built with the exception of the standard villain cards. You're going to have to keep them separate because when you, every time you play a villain, you're going to have to use those cards in that villain deck. They don't give you enough to put in every deck, okay? That's another shame, but that's just the way it is. So, <clears throat> you have standard Rhino cards, you have seven standard villain cards, and then you have whatever <clears throat> scheme, modular scheme cards you have in there. I have two extra sets, because uh, this recommends that you put one in there, and I put an extra one in there. So that's maybe about ten extra cards in there. So there's his deck. There's the encounter deck. And usually the way I do it, and it's very simple, I already have all my villain decks pre-made. Okay? I have what schemes I want to put in there. So they're already pre-made and separated. All I have to do is just take the basic standard cards and put them in there. And then whichever hero obligation card and put it in there. And that's it. That's quick. It's, it's nice, easy, and quick. Have my rhino thing here, have his main scheme, and then I have my deck. Real simple. The hero, <clears throat> I don't have to add anything to this one. Um, I have all my decks set up because I figure I'm going to play Justice. So he's got all the Justice cards, all the Spider-Man cards, and all basic cards. Like I said, they give you enough basic cards for my, all heroes except for one. One, one hero is not going to have enough basic cards so you're gonna to have to buy extra packs to get more basic cards or in theory what they want you to do is buy an extra base set I'm not doing that they can go they can go pump themselves on that so there you go so you start off in your alter ego form okay so alright so now and I have my nemesis set set to the side and that's it I have my counters everything I need right here um, this is your first player token since we're only playing one player um, we won't need this however if you are playing with more than one player uh, you will need to keep track of this because Rhino when it's his turn to attack um, 
he will attack the first player first. And when it's your turn, and when the encounter phase comes, and you have to draw encounter cards, the first player draws the counter card first. So, and it's important. It can make a difference. Um, they give you plenty of tokens to count the threat and scheme. You have four help point markers for heroes, uh, one for villains, and you have these little chits here, health markers. You have stunned, confused, tough, and... Uh, We'll go over what they mean uh, if they come out, okay? And that's basically what you get. So, um, for 50, 60 bucks, uh, it's not that bad. I still think they cheaped out a little bit, but, you know, what can you do? Okay, so we're going to go over a turn, and we're going to get a player guide. And we're going to go over, and they do give you player guides. You have the player phase reference sheet and you have the villain phase reference sheet. It's very simple. No confusion here. But we'll go over turn by turn, step by step on there and see what we can do. Okay, so let's go over our first turn. Now, this is what we're able to do. Take turns in player order. On your turn, you may play cards, trigger and request actions, use basic attack, thwart, and recovery powers, change your form, limit once per round in your turn. After all players have finished their turns, each player simultaneously discards any number of cards from their hand, draws up to their hand size, and readies each of their exhausted cards. Okay. <clears throat> so, right now I'm Peter Parker. I have this ability. It says generate a one of these symbols resource limit once per round. Okay. I'm going to do that. So I have an extra resource. Now I have my hand size of six, so let's draw our six cards. And you're gonna understand a little bit about resources. Okay. Okay, so as you can see, each card has a symbol on the bottom. Uh, this is mind, I think this is science. Um, this is, I don't know what that is, I, I forget what it is. It's. Let's see, let's go over what it is here. <clears throat> okay, here we go. Alright, this is physical. It's a fist, believe it or not. It looks like a brain, but it's physical. This is energy. Okay. This is mental. Okay. And then there's a wild... If you see that, there's a wild symbol that they can have, okay? So, the basic gist of it is, each card has a printed number value on the top. That's how many resources it costs to play that card. So, I don't want to play Daredevil. I have to pay four resources. doesn't matter what resources they are. It could be any or all of them. But if I wanted to play this card, I have to pay four resources to play it. <clears throat> okay? So I have, right now, I have Heroic Intuition. It's a Justice card, as you can see. Pl play any under any player's control, max per player, your hero gets plus one thwart. Okay, that's not a bad card. It's an upgrade. An upgrade card would go up here, because I get to keep it in play. And there we go. I have Daredevil. He costs four to play. After Daredevil thwarts, deal one damage to an enemy. Uh, he's an ally. He would go up here <clears throat> or over here. And he has two, two thwart and two attack <clears throat> and three hit points. So that means every time that I have him out in play every round, he can either thwart the villain scheme for two or he can attack a villain for two. But these little stars underneath them mean that every time he does that he's going to take one inconsequential damage so he would take one damage he has three hit points when he hits three hit points you discard him he's taken out of the game okay but you know he can do damage and thwart each round and he has that cool response after daredevil thwarts deal one damage to enemy so he's a real good card to have out we have great responsibility. It costs me nothing. When any amount of threat would be placed on the scheme, you take it as damage instead. <clears throat> I have Spider Tracer attached to a minion. Well, there's no minions out right now, but it says, When attached minion is defeated, remove three threat from a scheme. 
That's the Spider-Man card. And then we have Interrogation Room, max one per player. That means you can only have one of these cards in your deck. Okay, you can't stack the deck with five interrogation rooms and say, yeah, that's the way I'm going to play. You can't do that. So, and <clears throat> we response, and they're real good about telling you that. So there's no really confusion on that. After you defeat a minion, exhaust interrogation room, remove one threat from a scheme. Now, when they say exhaust things, this is basically tapping or you turn your card to the side and you know you can't play anything. You can't, you're done with it. You've used it. <clears throat> okay. Then we have enhanced spider sense. Hero interrupt. And this is another really thing. As you can see, it says Hero Interrupt, and we have Hero Interrupt. You can only play this card if you're your hero form, which is Spider-Man. You can't play it while you're Peter Parker. Okay, this is Alter Ego. So anything with a Hero Interrupt or Hero Action, it specifically says Hero, you can't play when you're Peter Parker. And there are going to be cards that say Alter Ego Action. You can't play that when you're a hero, okay? So you have to decide. <clears throat> it says, when a treachery card is revealed from the encounter deck, cancel its when revealed effect. So it's not bad either. So what I'm going to do, well, I generated an extra resource. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to play one, two, three, and then my extra resource and put these in my discard pile. And I'm going to put Daredevil out and about. And let's see, hmm. I could play this, but I don't think I am right now. I'm going to keep it in my hand. I think I might keep that in my hand too. Now, I could play this as an event. It's an event, as you can see. It says event, here's ally, here's upgrade. Uh, when an event happens, you take the card and you're done and you put it in your discard pile. So, okay. So I have Daredevil out. I usually put him out here. I think I'm going to flip Spider-Man. And I can do his thing. It says interrupt. When the villain initiates an attack against you, draw one card. It's spider sense. Okay. Now, I think what I'm going to do, honestly, is I think I'm going to have Spider-Man. He's going to attack for two. And I'm going to hit Rhino for two damage. So let's attack for two. And do our little counter here. He's at 12. Okay. So he's at 12. So let's exhaust him. However, I want to make a note. <clears throat> I can still do his interrupt. When he's exhausted, I just can't do any of these things. Okay. I have to. I can do this. But I can't do any more of these. I've already done that. And sometimes you get exhausted without having to do anything because of an encounter card. So just to let you know when you're exhausted and you're the hero. Or even if I was my alter ego. You can't do any of these type of things. You can do what's on here. But you can't do any of these. Okay. And I think what I'm going to do is... Uh, since there's nothing to thwart there, I'm going to have Daredevil attack Rhino for two. So he's going to take another two damage. So that puts him down to ten. <clears throat> but he's going to take one into con consequential damage. And there we go. So now um, I would end my turn. Now, if we were playing with another player, he would do his cards. Okay? He would attack or play his cards, do whatever he could, Rhino, or help me out in some way. Then that would be the end of his turn. And if we had another player, they would do that. Once all players are done, we're going to discard any number of cards we want to from our hand. But I don't want to discard any. So we'll just keep this. Now, we're going to drop to my hand size. And he was exhausted too. Now, if you look at Spider-Man, his hand size is different from Peter Parker's. His hand size is five. So I'm going to draw three more cards. One, two, three. And so I have five cards in my hand. Then I would, the other players would do the same. They would discard any cards they want and draw up to their hand size. And then once all players are done doing that, we ready all of our exhausted cards. So I'd ready him. 
and I'd ready Daredevil. Okay? And that's it. That's basically a hero turn. And then once all players readied their exhausted cards, the villain would go. Now the first thing the villain is going to do, the first thing you're going to do is you're going to put a uh, threat on a scheme. Now this tells you, you put one threat per player on the scheme, and it tells you you start with zero scheme on it. Okay, So we're going to put one threat per player, because we only have one player on here and we remember we get to seven we lose all right so that's basically real simple the next thing is is rhino <clears throat> is going to attack because i'm in spider-man form he will attack me for two now you have to um villains when they attack or scheme they get a boost okay so he attacks me for two and then i take the top card of the encounter deck i ignore everything on this card except for these two little symbols right here for each symbol on there that's an extra point of damage I am going to take okay so Rhino does two damage and then his boost is two more so he does four damage to me now <clears throat> okay I can take the damage and go down to six hit points Okay, or I can defend, exhaust him, and he'll be exhausted for my next turn, defend three of that damage, and only take one damage, which will put me down to nine. Okay, or since I have an ally out, I can have Daredevil basically take all the damage, he'd sacrifice himself for me, He'd take all the damage, which would be four, so that would defeat him. And he would go to my discard pile, and I would take no damage. So I have a couple options as to what I want to do. Now that four damage is pretty hefty. <clears throat> um, but I will go ahead, and I'm going to eat it. I'm going to eat the damage. So I take four damage. So I have six health left so he took me down from 10 to 6 in the first round okay <clears throat> and that's the second part of his phase so the first part was putting threat the second part was attacking or scheming and the third part is your encounter phase so I'm gonna draw one encounter card and this is I'm tough when revealed give Rhino a tough status card if Rhino already has a tough status card, this card gains Surge. Okay, let's go over what Surge means real quick. Surge means I just, if he already had a tough status card, I would just discard this card and draw another card. That's basically what Surge means, is you discard the card and you draw another card. Now, Rhino, I could give him a tough status card. And here you go. And it says the next time this character would take any amount of damage, discard this status card instead. Okay, so... We have that. However, <clears throat> I wasn't able. I, I could have played these. This could have helped. This is a treachery card. So had I had enough foresight, <clears throat> I could have played these. However, I don't. So I'm going to have to do what it says and give Rhino a tough status card. So next time I attack him, instead of doing damage, I take the tough card away and since I am the first player let's pretend I had more than one one player let's pretend we had three players so you put scheme you put threat on the scheme then Rhino would have attacked me then Rhino would have attacked player two and then Rhino would attack player three. And any other villains engaged with those players would attack them as well. So we have a Sandman card here. Let's say Sandman was engaged with player two. Let's pretend player two is She-Hulk. Not only would Rhino attack She-Hulk, but Sandman would attack She-Hulk as well. Okay? And he would attack her for three damage. He doesn't... Now, minions don't boost. The villains do, but the minions don't boost, okay? 
And then after he attacked everybody, we would all draw an encounter card, and in order, first player would do his encounter card, second player would do his encounter card, third player would do their encounter card. And a lot of bad stuff can happen. So that's, <clears throat> that's that. And then you would end his turn. You would take the first player marker, move it along to the next person. That person would be the first player. And there we go. <clears throat> and a whole new round starts. Not hard. Very simple. It's no more complicated really than legendary. You just have to keep with, with a few counters. And... Uh, the complexity of this game comes from what cards you want to play and what you want to do, and sometimes the schemes. Because <clears throat> they can get a little overwhelming. But so far, <clears throat> it's not that hard. Setup was not bad. Um, you know, once you have your decks pre-built, it's not bad. You just take your decks out. The round turns aren't bad. And, you know, you strategize, strategize with other players. And the villain turns aren't that bad. So, it's not that bad. So it's not overly complex. So we're going to get ready for my second turn. Now I did forget one thing where it says when you villain initiates an attack against you, draw one card. So I would have had a card, an extra card in my hand. It, it would have been emergency here. So I would have had three cards and draw two. <clears throat> or it would have been webbed up, I'm sorry. It had been one of these, but I wouldn't have done anything with it. So it's okay. But this is something you got to keep track of. I got to keep remembering that. So let's see what I have here. What I want to play. I am probably want to play webbed up. It says hero form only. Attached to an enemy. Max one per enemy. When attached enemy would attack, this card webbed up instead. Then stun that enemy. And so I think that's what I'm going to do. So it's going to cost me four to play it. So I'm going to take all four cards out of my discard my four cards because it cost me four and I'm going to play webbed up, it's an upgrade <clears throat> and so we're good on that now I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to attack Rhino with Spider-Man and that will take care of the tough card and then I'm going to have Daredevil attack Spider-Man uh, well he does thwart so I'm going to have him thwart he, well, no, not yet. Uh, I'm going to have him attack Rhino for two. And he takes one in consequential damage. And so we're down to eight hit points for Rhino. So Rhino has eight hit points. <clears throat> and exhausts him. And that will be the end of my turn. So let me ready everybody. And redraw my hand size. Just five. Whew. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so Rhino is going to go. So, first thing we're going to do is we're going to put one threat on the scheme. So, he's at two now. Then he will attack me. Alright, however, when attacked, enemy would attack, discard webbed up. So, I'm going to discard this card. He's not going to attack. Then stun that enemy. Okay, so I discard this card. We'll forego his attack because he can't. And then we're going to stun him. And what stun means is, we have a look at it. It says, the next time this character would attack, discard this status card instead. So that's pretty good. That's a pretty damn good card. So, <clears throat> I avoided an attack. Next time he attacks, he's basically got to get rid of the stun card. Now, it's in counter phase. So, we draw one card, and it's explosion. When revealed, if bomb scare is in play, it is not. Assign X damage among heroes and allies, where X is the amount of threat on bomb scare. If bomb scare is not in play, which it is not in play, this card gains surge. So we just basically have to draw another card. Caught off guard. When revealed, discard an upgrade or support you control. Well, I don't have any upgrade or support cards in play. If no cards were discarded this way, this card gains surge. Okay. All right. So next card. Crowd control. Okay. This is a new scheme. It's a side scheme. Panic civilians crowd the arena, the area. 
It is difficult to confront Rhino without putting him at risk. Get the people to safety. Crisis icon. And that's what this little symbol means right here. While this scheme is in play, you cannot remove threat from the main scheme. And it starts with two scheme per player. So, I have to put two scheme on it. And as long as this side scheme is in play, I cannot take any threat off of this scheme. Well, that's a pickle there, but we'll see what we can do. So now it is our turn. And I think with Spider-Man, mm, 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 mm. Hmm. Move three threat from scheme. I'm going to use Spinning Web Kick. It's going to cost me three. So I have to pay one, two, three. And it says heroic, a heroic action. So I have to be my hero form, which I am. Attack. Deal eight damage to an enemy. So I play this. And I just popped Rhino down. He had eight hit points. Um, I took all his hit points. So now he's going to go to his second form. And here's his second form. He still has one scheme, but this time he has three attack. And it says, when revealed, search the encounter deck and discard pile for the break and take inside scheme and reveal it. Shuffle the encounter deck. Okay. And he now has 15 hit points. So this raises hit points up to 15, which we're going to do. So he has 15 hit points now. I kicked the piss out of him. But now we have to do a new side scheme. So let's find the break. And here's the break and the take in side scheme. So we're going to put that in play. <clears throat> we'll shuffle the encounter deck. All right. All right. And this is a break and take in. When revealed, place an additional one threat here. And this is a different icon. It says hazard icon. Deal plus one encounter card during the villain phase. So that means, of course, we have to start with two scheme on it. So let's do that. Then, when revealed, we had to place an additional one threat here per player. So it's going to have three threat on there. Okay. And we have to deal one extra encounter card during the villain phase. So right now, we have two side schemes out. One that does not let us take threat off of here. And we have this one, which is going to cause us to have to draw an additional counter card. And Rhino is in his third, his, his final phase. And so I've played everything I can play. <clears throat> However, I still can attack. So this is what I'm going to do. I am going to attack Rhino for two. So he's down to 13. So let's exhaust him. Then, I think I'm going to have Daredevil thwart for two. Now, <clears throat> so I can take these two off of here. This card is done with, so we have gotten rid of that side scheme, so now I can work on that one. And it says, after Daredevil thwarts, deal one damage to an enemy. So I will deal one more damage. To Rhino. However, the inconsequential damage has come up, and that means he has taken three damage. So Daredevil has been defeated, and he goes in my discard pile. <clears throat> so that's what happened there. And so I will ready my Spider Man, and I will draw up to my hand size. And if you notice, I have another swing web kit, which is good. If you notice, I have an energy card. This is a resource card. Max one per deck, so you only get one of these per deck, and it's worth two resources. Okay? So that's good. And I have a web shooter here. It uses three web counters. Enters play with three counters. When those are gone, this discard this card. Hero resource. Exhaust web shooter and remove one counter from it. Generate a wild resource. That's not a bad card to play. And this one's not a bad card to play either. So, <clears throat> we'll see. 
Okay, now it is Rhino's turn. Now we will put one thwart or one threat here on here. So he's at three. Um, this one will not get any more threat because there is no symbol. Like this says, this is basically right here, it's going to get plus one. This symbol basically means it's going to get a thwart at the beginning of every round. This one here doesn't have that symbol, so it's not getting any threat at the beginning of a round, okay? Alright, <clears throat> now Rhino would attack me. However, he is stunned. So we get rid of the stun card, he does not attack me. But now, however, we come to the encounter phase, and because the scheme is in play, I have to draw two encounter cards and play them. So let's go ahead and do this. So the first encounter is Shock Therapy. When revealed, discard one card from the encounter deck. The villain heals one damage for each boost icon discarded this way. And you're good, this line means you're going to ignore the bottom, okay? Alright, so we have to discard one card. And he heals three damage. Wow. <clears throat> so he's back up to 15. Ah, that was, that's pretty painful there. Okay. So that's the first encounter card. The second encounter card is attached to Rhino. When Rhino attacks, this attack gains overkill. And it's fixing to explain what overkill means. It says X's damage to an ally from this attack is dealt to that ally's controller. At the end of this attack, discard charge. So you see, not only is he going to get a plus three attack, which is six, which he can kill me in one shot if he does that, <clears throat> but also, if he were to attack an ally, any extra damage would go to me, and that's what overkill means. So, okay, now things are not looking very good for me. Okay, so, whew, what are we going to do? Um, wow. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to play I'm going to play <clears throat> since this is worth two I'm going to take this one this one and I'm going to play swing web kick and I'm going to deal eight damage to Rhino so he goes back down to eight. I mean, uh, nine. Wait a minute. Fifteen, five, seven. I can't count. Sorry. See? He goes down to seven. So that was a good, good little kick there. <clears throat> okay. And then I don't have anything else. I could place uh, spinning web shooter. And I think I will play that. I'll play the for justice. Cost one for me to play spinning web shooter and enters play with three web counters and that's what these little markers right here are for if you'll notice. Okay. And then <clears throat> I will flip to Peter Parker and I will exhaust him and recover three health so I'm back up to nine okay and that is the end of my turn so I will uh, put him back to ready and I will draw six cards Avengers Mansion backflip First aid, another webbed up, the power of justice, and a surveillance team. Now, as you can see, this backflip is not going to cost me anything. And it says interrupt defense. When you would take any amount of damage from an attack, prevent all that damage. So I want to keep that. However, it's the end of my turn. It's now Rhino's turn. So we have to put one threat on the scheme. He's up to four. Whew. Okay, so now he would attack me. However, I am in my alter ego form. 
So instead, he's going to put threat on the scheme. So let's see how much it does. He normally does one. And we draw a boost card. And so he's going to get another one. So he puts two more threat on the scheme. I am at six. One more. And I have lost. Then he's going to do two encounter cards. So let's see. The first one is... Hard to keep down. When revealed, Rhino heals four damage. If no damage is healed this way, this card gains surge. Okay, so he's going to heal four. So he's back up to 11. I, it looks like I'm probably going to lose this one. Um, I'm not doing too well. And this is the easiest one. But to be fair, now I have kind of been playing just stuff just to show you different abilities and stuff. But he is kicking my butt. <clears throat> Second card. Hydra Mercenary. Okay. Guard. While this minion is engaged with you, you cannot attack the villain. He has no scheme and he has one attack. <clears throat> he has three hit points. Okay, well that's the end of my turn. So, let's go ahead and do my turn. Now, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to generate a resource and then I'm going to flip him. And let's see what I can play. <clears throat> I think... I'm going to play uh, one, I don't want to get rid of that one, one, two, three, and then one is four. Hmm. Well, do I want to do that? Hold on. I generated one. I can use one of these to generate another one. Which I will do. And I'll get rid of these two cards. <clears throat> and I'll play Webbed Up. On Rhino. Then. I think what I'm going to do. Oof, is. If I don't take a thwart off that. He's going to win. So I'm going to have to thwart him for one. So I'm going to have to thwart his scheme for one. And exhaust him. And that's all I can do. <clears throat> so, yeah. So that'll be the end of my turn. Let me ready everybody. Let me draw my hand. Mockingbird. Okay, she's good. Okay, so now it's his turn. So he is going to put one more thwart back on here. Okay. Now, he would attack, however... He would attack, however, um, I'm playing Webbed Up. So, Webbed Up is going to be played. His attack is really nullified, so this goes away. And he is stunned. However, the Hydra Mercenary is not, so he will attack me for one damage. <clears throat> He's not the villain, so the villain, uh, I don't get to do my spider sense here. So I'm now at eight. Okay, and now I have to do two encounter cards. When revealed the villain schemes. Well, that's it. That's going to do it. I am going to lose because <clears throat> he would scheme for one. There is absolutely nothing I can play to stop that. And he will get seven schemes. And so he actually has won. Wow. Okay. He won. I had him pretty good. Um, but he kept healing. And that built up on me pretty good. So, and maybe I didn't play the best cards. But, eh, you know, I was just trying to show how it plays. But, he did kick my butt though. So, <clears throat> wow. Um, his second card would have been the Obligation. You may flip to alter ego form. Choose one. Exhaust Peter Parker. Remove eviction notice from the game. Or discard one card at random from your hand. This card gains surge. Discard this Obligation. So, so as you can see, that's how it plays. That's Rhino. <laughs> 
Next time we play, we're going to play Claw, and I think I'm going to use Black Panther because he plays differently. But uh, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, <clears throat> you, know, you know, we'll go over more of the stuff, but as you can see, the cards that tell you skill, upgrade, support, shield, and event, support. So it's, it's not that hard, and it is, it's fairly easy, and it's fairly fun. And Rhino, like I said, is the basic villain. Uh, he's really not that hard. I just didn't play him the greatest, and I played some, some dumb cards to show you some stuff. Um, and that's how it goes. But I have a lot of fun playing this game. I, I am glad I paid the $100 to get everything. And... That they, when they keep, like I said, when they keep coming out with new heroes that I like, I will continue to support this game. And so far, so good. I have enjoyed it. I, when I've played it solo, and when I've played it with other people, we've had fun. The games usually weren't this short, but um, strategizing and stuff like that. And I, and I do like it better than Legendary, to be honest with you. Um, where Legendary was about a year in now. Compared to Legendary now, I still like Legendary now a little bit better because there's just more heroes, more villains, more variety in the schemes, uh, more keywords that do stuff. But I'm pretty sure the longer this game goes on, the more stuff they'll do and the more bigger and better it'll get. So there is that. So I hope you enjoyed it and I hope to see you next time. Until then, have fun.